Hey guys, let's discuss uh, today's uh, set of questions on current affairs. Uh, this is the second part of the two video talks that we have every week. So here's the first question. Who has become the youngest person to receive the US's highest uh, civilian award, the Presidential Medal of Freedom? Now that's, this is Simone Biles and she's just 21 years, 25 years old, just 25. And who's this person? Uh, if you would want to write, I would just go ahead with this. And just before that, who's what's the Presidential Medal of Freedom? This is the highest civilian award in the United States. The highest civilian award. Its Indian counterpart would be Bharat Ratna. Bharat Ratna. Now this is also given to this is given to both civilian and military, whereas Bharat Ratna is given to only civilians. Okay, that's the basic difference. Otherwise, these are two, you know, uh, the, the highest, you know, uh, awards, prizes in uh, these two countries, you know, the United States and uh, India. So, um, Simon Biles is a five time world all round champion. She's a gymnast par excellence, considered with the, one of the greatest gymnasts in the world. Now, she is a five time world all round champion. That's one, two, seven time Olympic medal winner. Seven times. I mean, she's won Olympic, seven Olympic medals. Uh, and you should know that this is, uh, she's tied this with, um, you know, she's, she's in a tie position. I mean, the most won by any gymnast ever. Okay. No, uh, I'm talking of an American gymnast. Um, one more thing is that she has um, most number of world medals, world gold medals. Like, you know, she has about 19 world golds. That's a huge number, isn't it? Yeah. Overall, she has won 25 world medals, 25 world medals, of which 19 are golds. Both of these are records. So there are four records you should look at. It. One, five-time major, uh, five-time world major all-round or five-time world all-round champion, uh, seven Olympic gold medals, seven Olympic medals, then, you know, um, 25 world medals of which 19 are world gold medals. Okay, that's a lot of this and, you know, she packs a punch at 4.8, that's her height, 4.8. So she's a dynamite, a pocket dynamite as they call, you know. According to the, oh, by the way, who is the youngest, uh, it just came to my mind, who is the youngest recipient to the Bharat Ratna? Because uh, we, the questions uh, about Biles being the youngest recipient of the, you know, the US Presidential Medal of Freedom. And in the case of the Bharat Ratna, the youngest recipient is uh, Sachin Tendulkar, who received the Bharat Ratna at the age of 40. He was just 40 when he received the Bharat Ratna. Yeah, that was 2014, 2014. And just uh, one more thing. Who is the oldest recipient of the Bharat Ratna? Yeah, the youngest, as you know, is Sachin Tendulkar, Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar. And the oldest, see this guy was just 40. And the oldest happens to be, I'll write the name here, okay. Oldest recipient of the Bharat Ratna is Dhondo Keshav Karve. Is Dhondo Keshav Karve. I did not think of this when I was looking at the questions. And he received the Bharat Ratna in 1958 at the age of 100. 100 years old he was. In 1958, when the great social reformer Dhondo Keshav Karve received the Bharat Ratna. Okay. According to the Economist Intelligence Units, it's not, uh, it should be EIU. There is an error here. Economist Intelligence Units uh, Global Livability Index 2022, which is the least livable city in India, ranked 146 globally. Among those considered, which is which is India's least livable city, 
well uh, bengaluru contrary to what most people would say it is bengaluru that ranks the worst city to live in or least livable see uh, if you want to write this you just take this title global livability index 2022 indian cities indian cities 112 uh, delhi new delhi How is this? <laughs> New Delhi, 117 Mumbai, okay, and 142, I think it's Pune. No, 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 I think 142 is the south, southern Indian city of Chennai. I'll strike through this so it shows that I made an error there. Chennai, okay, the next one is Ahmedabad. and uh, 146 Bengaluru so five cities have been ranked uh, in uh, the top 150 cities uh, for livability on livability index which measures um, you know environment education um, health care uh, stability yeah factors like uh, infrastructure these things pretty much decide the kind of lives we live in cities okay infrastructure is major uh, healthcare facilities how expensive they are how affordable they are how accessible they are okay then we of course look at the education facilities as well and um, you know apart from the five that we mentioned um, you know uh, on the basis of the five that we mentioned these cities have been ranked and the best city as per this index in india to live uh, you live in is new delhi 112 112 which means that in the top 100 there is not a single indian city okay so of the five cities picked to choice picked to you know picked uh, from india bengaluru fares the worst 146th rank what about the world's best i think we discussed this in the previous session so the world's best you know world's best i today seems to be that i am missing letters though i realize them quite fast you know in realizing it quite faster i'm missing letters yeah world's best cities to live in one vienna you know where is vienna it's a capital of a country called austria two Copenhagen, which as you would know is the capital of Denmark, and three is Zurich. Zurich, you know, is a city in Switzerland. okay the world's best which is the world's least livable city the world's least livable city is you know damascus damascus is the capital of syria damascus the capital of syria yeah <clears throat> that's it guys pretty much sums up world's best least livable and of course rankings of five indian cities which of the following institutions or nations is our part of the world part of the un ocean conference 2022 in the previous session we looked at where was it being held and all that and um, you should know that um, three countries uh, uh, three entities are part of it one the un of course it's a un conference uh, kenya why kenya because in kenya you have the capital nairobi which is home of the unep which is the united nations environment program okay the united nations environment program is headquartered in nairobi and this was a sponsor of this contest uh, this uh, what is a un uh, this conference united nations um, ocean conference 2022 so kenya's link comes from the head office of uh, 
you know, of UNEP in Nairobi, and that's how the link comes. And of course, Portugal is where it was held. It was held in Lisbon. You know, Lisbon, as you know, is the capital of Portugal. Capital of Portugal. And to just to give you some more dope, Kenya, we looked at the capitals. Let's look at the leaders. Not related. Chalo, let's write. Okay. Um, is it Kenya? President is Uhuru Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta. Portugal. The president is Rebelo Marcelo de Sousa. Mm. Rebelo Marcelo de Sousa. Okay, there we go. By partnering with which institution did Green Co sign an agreement to launch the world's so to launch the country's first dedicated school of sustainable science and technology, IIT Hyderabad, Indian Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. So Green Co and IIT Hyderabad will set up the you know the school of sustainable science and technology on IIT Hyderabad campus. Okay. Who owns Greenco? Greenco's CEO is a guy called Anil Kumar. He is also a promoter, founder of the company. Chalamala Setti. Chalamala Setti. Anil Kumar Chalamala Setti. Okay. Yeah. You can always learn all these things. It's, it's all easy actually. Hmm? At one point, do you remember back in school we learned that Kharagpur uh, had the longest railway platform? That's what I learned back in school. But today we know that Gorakhpur city has the longest platform, rail platform in India. Gorakhpur city. Yeah. Goraknath Bhagwan Shiv gave his name to the city of Gorakhpur. Okay. Identify the major recommendations made at the 47th the Goods and Services Council. Now, all of these are right, actually. But I want you to know that GST is an in, indirect tax. Like income tax is a tax on your income, the income earned by you. But GST is an indirect tax. And in India, almost everyone pays GST. Except the girl, you know, who buys a biscuit packet, the little girl who does who buys a biscuit packet. Of course, she does not pay the tax. Her parents pay the tax. But literally, anyone who buys some stuff in India, who avails the service, pays GST. Okay. So the GST Council meet. This meet, uh, you, you, they may ask you this in the exam. Where was it held? It was held in, if I think, yeah, it was held in Chandigarh. It was held in Chandigarh. What are the objective of such meetings? Well, the objective is uh, rate rationalization. See, whenever you discuss um, these kinds of measures, you look at these terms. Rate, rationalization. I like to use Z and not S. Okay. Then facilitation of trade. Facilitation of trade. And three ease of compliance ease of gst compliance gst compliance for businesses so these are three major reasons three major reasons my friends one rate rationalization increase decrease making it suitable okay given the circumstances, the context in which that entire this system operates. Then facilitation of trade, it should promote trade. Goods, you know, um, the, the, the entire objective of taxation policy is to improve trade, you know, trade, promotion of trade, movement of goods and services. And of course, uh, more and more people should come into the system, the tax net, GST tax net. That's the idea. To make it easy for people to be able to access these services, you know, they have rationalized the entire system. So back in those days, there used to be many taxes. You had uh, central, you had central excess tax, state excess tax. You had 
you know sales tax you had as both state sales tax you know central sales tax you had excess duty value added tax plenty of taxes now all have been mixed merged into one tax gst okay so this particular measure this particular council also spoke about uh, imposing newer taxes or increasing certain increasing or decreasing certain taxes like for example uh, they levied a 18% gst on uh, nicotine based gum nicotine based gum without tobacco so people who have this habit of smoking and want to quit they chew nicotine gum and there is now 18% tax on that if it's a nicotine and some like some people say okay i will not smoke but i would eat uh, nicotine gum tobacco so nicotine gum with tobacco that attracts 28% tax goods that are not healthy that the government actively discourages the consumption of are called demerit goods demerit goods are those that don't add any merit tobacco alcohol okay um, you know you have uh, tobacco consumption in multiple ways like bds like roll tobacco like cigarettes or direct consumption through pan masala or jarda you know all those things kheni and all so to reduce in the consumption distribution sale and consequently the production the government has always had higher gst tax rates on demerit goods so alcohol is a very good example then you have tobacco yeah alcohol and tobacco these are pretty good examples um, you know um in um, you know uh, when it comes to demerit goods okay so they are you know there always this higher taxes on goods that that don't that really add value basically to discourage their consumption the government has this kinds of taxes and sometimes you know luxury cars attract very high rates of gst because someone who is willing to pay pay 1 crore on a car would have enough you know to pay another 28% that's how the government works okay um there is this entire debate about uh, fuel and um, um you know uh, alcohol not being under gst yes these two are not under gst alcohol and fuel are major sources of income for state governments the, you know more they sell the more the state governments make money so they are outside the purview of gst okay local taxes excise duties and all that are levied on fuel and alcohol okay so that's pretty much sums up on our, our discussion on these things yeah and there is one more yeah this is slightly different which states have signed an interstate in declaration of intent to work in collaboration uh, to combat trafficking in persons the first of its kind initiative in india all of them have come together to make an arrangement where there will be intelligence sharing okay information sharing um survivor protection survivor care someone's being trafficked okay let me tell you first what is trafficking i think i jumped the gun jumping the gun is fine sometimes but uh, in these kinds of things it's not good see trafficking is uh, moving people between jobs or between places and forcing them into certain degrees of certain kinds of employment without their consent is trafficking okay like people who are vulnerable some people men women children who are vulnerable poor desperate you know they are you know forced into certain kinds of employment like prostitution like uh, slavery to work as bonded labor somewhere so to to make sure that such kind of trafficking does not happen you know these states have come together to form one want to say to 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 make an initiative to to ensure that you know there is intelligence sharing between these six states intelligence sharing 
then there is um, what is say um, strategy sharing we are doing this what are what are you doing adopting best practices from each other and um, fitness protection someone's come forward to complain against someone okay that this person is uh, you know uh, indulging in trafficking and everything or it could be that a person who's a victim could be making could be leaking such information so we need to protect the information the the witness okay and uh, provide all legal help so legal help is equally important okay and sometimes it is also important to rehabilitate such you know whistleblowers such survivors we need to take care of those survivors uh, you see india has one of the highest rates of trafficking in the world we are among the most you know we are among the most trafficked countries in the world when i say this what it means is that millions of indians are trafficked every year thousands of children go missing every year and it's an unfortunate thing that people make money by separating children by kidnapping children and taking them away from their beloved ones from their loved ones women are forced into prostitution men are forced into prostitution so these are things and you know sometimes it's it's a in it's an invisible form of um trafficking like in you know, a bonded labor it may seem like the someone's working in the field of their own choice but it could be that that person has been forced to work like that so I mean, plenty of problems out there okay so intelligence sharing best practices sharing witness protection legal help rehabilitation and care of survivors these things matter a lot and these states have come together to do something about this entire issue oh. the ninth plenary meeting of the intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services which is ipbes9 took place nine is ninth plenary okay took place in bonn which is in germany this is the capital of west germany in germany there was a country called west germany and then there was east germany east germany was um, what is it uh, east germany was um, um, a communist and west germany was a democratic state but in the late 80s there was a movement and at the end of the turn of the 90s decade you know these two countries merged these countries became a separate you know a new country called germany no west germany no east germany i love that story some day i will tell you the story of the collapse of communism in east germany eastern europe like nations like romania you know these are fascinating things our job is to learn so we can always learn we can always learn see i was um, writing something here this you can see that there is some boxes so this is how i create pictures to remember things that's it just need to link one with the other okay so when you look at um, germany yeah all these countries here germany's capital is berlin berlin and its chancellor they don't have a prime minister they have a chancellor his name is olaf scholz love schools germany okay netherlands what's the capital amsterdam and the prime minister is mark ratti mark ratti neither means under lands under lands 17% of this country's land is below sea level 17% 26% is within 1 meter of you know the sea level within 1 meter of sea level yeah uh italian prime minister has just resigned but uh, the president there you know uh, materella has refused to accept the resignation of mario draghi the prime minister mario draghi and as you know the capital of italy is rome the capital of italy is rome mm let's clear this spain 
the capital is Madrid and the Prime Minister is Pedro Sanchez. Greece, you know that the capital is Athens, it's a bankrupt country, no paisa in this country. Okay, they have an enormous debt to GDP ratio there, it's like well, the GDP is about 300 billion dollars, um, less than that actually, so it's like, you know, I think it's about 210 dollars, uh, 210 billion dollars, um, and their debt is about 320 billion dollars. I mean, these countries are neck deep in debt, Udar. Okay. So, Athens is the capital and the Prime Minister is Hiriakos Mitsotakis. Hiriakos Mitsotakis. Okay. That's the Prime Minister. And all of these countries are, they are part of the Eurozone. So, they have euro as a common currency which company has announced a startup school sorry guys startup school india initiative in small towns for startups google so we saw in the previous session that um, 67000 startups are there in india which are spread across 643 districts 643 districts and about 49% of these startups come from tier 2 and tier 3 cities. 47% of women directors. Yeah. I remember this, what we, that's what we discussed in the previous session. Okay, as of today, 7.2 lakh employees, 7.2 lakh people are employed by startups. 7.2 lakh people are employed by startups. Uh, let me take you further on this. Google is owned by a company called Alphabet. Alphabet is a parent company of Google. Okay, parent company. You know how this name comes? Alpha and Beta are the first two letters of the English of the of the Greek alphabet. That's why the Varnamala is called Alphabet. Okay, A B C D E F like that. Alpha and Beta are the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. But uh, Google is now owned by the Google parent companies, Alphabet. Uh, alphabet was started by two guys, Sir J. Brin and Larry Page. These two guys started Google first and of course later they started Alphabet to bring together all the companies operating and you know under one roof. They they own a lot of companies. Yeah, Waymo, W A Y M O, which is a driverless car project. They own this autonomous car project. They own this. Yeah. So where is this headquartered? Alphabet is headquartered in a place called Mountain View. Mountain View is a small town in the American state of. California. Since this, uh, the first three are American companies, we will stick to writing this. Mountain View, California, US. CA is California Code. Okay. And its CEO is a guy called Sundar Pichai. Sundar Rajan Pichai. Sundar Rajan Pichai. Okay. Hmm. That's Google. Meta, Meta owns Facebook, Meta owns Facebook, it owns WhatsApp, it owns Oculus, which is a world virtual reality company. Meta is headquartered in a place called Menlo Park, Menlo Park. Uh, it's C, okay, Menlo Park is in California, US. Its CEO is a co-founder named Mark Zuckerberg. Cool, Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. Um, 
how big do you think is Facebook? Hmm. I'll come to that in a while. Let me give you all the data first. Okay. So you have Amazon. Amazon's head, head office in um, Seattle, Washington State. Washington State. On the west coast of US, you have Washington State. That's the capital. The CEO is Andy Jassy. Andy Jassy. That's a CEO. Reliance Industries and Mumbai, TCS are both headquartered in Mumbai. And you know that TCS is run by a guy called Rajesh Gopinathan. Mukesh Amari owns Reliance Industries. Hmm. How big are these companies? To give you an idea, how big are these companies? TCS is a $26 billion company. All figures in US dollar, billion. Okay. Meta, 117. Google, 258. Amazon, hold your heart, $470 billion. Reliance Industries, 97. This, let me put it here in the order perspective. Okay. See how big it is, these companies are. Look at Amazon. Amazon is a $470 billion company. That is about 15% of India's GDP. 13, 14% of India's GDP. Okay, <laughs> that's a pretty large you know, uh, number. So you have um, TCS at $26 billion and uh, Google at $258 billion. India's biggest company, Reliance Industries, at $97 billion. And most likely in 2023 financial year that has just started, 2022, not really just started. It's we are in 2023. We are in financial year 2023, remember this, which means it started on 1st April 2022, will end on 31st March 2023. So this is a financial year. The year in which it ends is that financial year. Where? So in this year, this year most likely uh, Reliance Industries may become hundred billion dollar company India's first hundred billion dollar company okay yeah the sales would be something like you know seven lakh crore rupees as of today and likely to touch 8.2 lakh crore rupees this year okay so the following persons were recently nominated to the Rajya Sabha all of them I want you to write this you write about Rajya Sabha Rajya Sabha. Um, one started in 1952. Started in 1952. As a permanent house, as a permanent house. As a permanent house of the parliament. Next. Maximum seating capacity. Maximum seating capacity. 250. Next. Maximum membership. Maximum membership. 245. Next. Next point, fourth one. Of these 245, of these 245, 233 persons, 233 members are elected from states and union territories. States and union territories.
while while the remaining 12 the remaining 12 are nominated are nominated n o m i n a t e d nominated it's there in the question are nominated by the president by the president of the 12 the four mentioned here Hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to discuss these guys. Okay. So, um, I think that's fairly good stuff about Rajya Sabha. Yeah. Last point. The vice president of India, the vice president of India is an ex officio chairperson ex officio chairperson ex officio chairperson of the rajya sabha of the rajya sabha of the rajya sabha mm. Whoever is the vice president automatically becomes the chairperson of the Rajya Sabha. And you know, the vice president is the chairperson of the Rajya Sabha. What is the salary of the vice president of India? Mm, zero. The salary of the vice president of India is zero. Yes, yes. You may think, oh, come on, Bharat. It is four lakhs. I read somewhere it's four lakhs per month. It is four lakhs per month. But not at the vice president. As a chairman of the Rajya Sabha, there is a salary, okay, for the vice president. So as a vice president, zero salary. But as a chairperson of the Rajya Sabha, the vice president gets 4 lakh rupees per month. Okay, <laughs> it's there in the constitution also. Okay, that there is no salary mentioned for the vice president. Name the British Prime Minister who recently resigned after months of scandals. Scandals and scandals. Boris Johnson resigned, was forced to resign after some of his um, top ministers, especially the first two guys, Rishi Sunak and Sajid Javid resigned. Okay, I want you to write this, that Boris Johnson resigned because of party gate scandal. Party gate scandal. Party gate scandal probed by probed by probed by Sue Gray Sue Gray. It's called the Sue Gray report by Sue Gray. Don't worry, it's you know. Um, Illegal parties were held. Uh, when I say illegal, parties are never illegal unless they are expressly prohibited by the law. And in this case, they were held at the Prime Minister's residence um, when there was a lockdown in the country. Yes. When there was social distancing norms in place, when there was a complete lockdown in the in Great Britain. The, there was a party going on at Boris Johnson's residence, you know, uh, Prime Minister's residence. So this is where, you know, he was told that, look, you have not behaved in the right way. You broke the law. So what kind of a Prime Minister would break a law? To enjoy a party, to enjoy a drink. So that is one of those things that led to the, you know, uh, ousting of Boris Johnson. See, the British Prime Minister lives in a place called 10 Downing Street. Oh, you may wonder what is this? What is this? See, the street is called the Gali Main Road. Its name is Downing Street. Downing Street. Okay. 10 is a house number. In the row, it is the 10th house. The 10th house in the street is the residence of the Prime Minister of Britain. 11 down 11 downing street okay is the chancellor of the exchequer the residence of the chancellor of the exchequer simple eh? non no. ordinary bhasha finance minister okay finance minister 
the chancellor of the exchequer the number two guy in the british you know council of ministers lives next door to the prime minister of britain so rishi sunak was the chancellor of the exchequer he resigned he was the first minister to resign you know after a, you know a series of allegations against um, boris johnson including this party gate stuff okay a lot of scandals were there this is one of those things okay now currently rishi sunak is leading the race to become the british prime minister and um, you know he also happens to be the son in law of infosys co-founder and former chairperson nr narayan murthy mr murthy's daughter yeah is married to rishaks rishi sunak yes okay fair enough yeah there's too much stuff here look at the choice five she's a foreign minister of britain elizabeth truss she also wants to become the prime minister she sunak and there is another person called mordon penny mordon they're all running neck to neck mm. though sunak has a lead slight lead over the other two and most likely he'll be the prime minister of britain yeah India has been elected to the UNESCO panel on intangible cultural heritage for 22 2022-2026 cycle. The headquarters of the UNESCO is what's the full form of UNESCO? United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization is headquartered in Paris. Headquartered in Paris. This is where you have the Secretary General of UNESCO sitting. Audrey Azule Okay Audrey Azule Hmm Audrey Azule New York you have United Nations United Nations then Vienna International Atomic Energy Agency International Atomic Energy Agency it's a UN body Atom, International Atomic Energy Agency, that is where the head office is. Berlin, there is nothing extraordinary in Berlin. Rome is home to FAO, which is the Food and Cult Agricultural Organization. Food and Agricultural Organization. Food and Agricultural Organization. Okay. That's it. Who of the following persons will be the new Sherpa, the you could say the coordinator, the lead spokes, you know, lead guy from India, uh, the new Sherpa guide, essentially guide from um, from the for the G20 summit. Sherpa is the guy who guides people, mountaineers up tall, dangerous mountains. He's a guide basically, mountain guide. So in this case, the guy who would lead India into, you know, into our preparation for the G20 summit will be Amitabh Kant. Amitabh Kant happens to be the ex-CEO of Niti Aayog, ex-Chief Executive Officer of Niti Aayog. Okay. And um, we mentioned, we discussed the G20 in the previous session. So let's not spend time here. Rajiv Kumar is... Rajiv Kumar, why is this going here? Yeah. Is the um, Election Commissioner of India, EC, Election Commissioner of India. In fact, these two guys are Election Commissioners. Election Commissioners of India. Election Commissioners of India. Parmeshwaran Iyer will be the new CEO of Niti Aayog. I think, yeah, Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog, R. Uh, Sharma, Ram Sevak Sharma, Ram Sevak Sharma is a CEO of National Health Authority of India. National Health Authority of India. It looks like National Highways Authority of India. But this is National Health Authority of India, Implementation Agency of Ayushman Bharat, 
आयुष्मान भारत रियली गुड स्टाफ हु चेयर द फर्स्ट मीटिंग ऑफ द एपेक्स मॉनिटरिंग अथॉरिटी कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड टू रिव्यू ऑफ द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द नेशनल इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम निर्मला सीतारामन एज यू नो शी इज अ फिनेंस मिनिस्टर एंड द कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर सो टू मिनिस्ट्रीज टू इंपॉर्टेंट मिनिस्ट्रीज आर हेडेड बाई निर्मला सीतारामन वन इज द फिनेंस मिनिस्ट्री द अदर इज कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर्स मिनिस्ट्री कॉर्पोरेट अफेयर्स मिनिस्ट्री अमित शाह होल्ड्स अ होम पोर्ट होम मिनिस्टर एंड कॉपरेशन मिनिस्ट्री कॉपरेशन मिनिस्टर What about the choice? Dharmendra Pradhan, Narayan Tatu Rane, Prahlad Joshi. Hmm. Chalo, let's write. Dharmendra Pradhan. Dharmendra Pradhan. He holds two important ministries. One, education. The Minister of Education. And two. Uh, two. Skill development. Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Okay. Narayan Tatu Rani, Ministry of micro small and medium enterprises minister of micro small and medium enterprises parala joshi three major ministries one coal two steel and three parliamentary affairs parliamentary affairs Okay, parliamentary affairs. Akasha A recently received the Air Opter Operator Certificate from the DGCA to commence operations from July 2022. This new airline is backed by Indian billionaire trader Rakesh Junjunwala. Rakesh Junjunwala, and before that, DGCA is Directorate General of Civil Aviation. Directorate General of Civil Aviation. Okay. Next, um, you know, Rakesh Chunjunwala. He is a head of a company called Rare Enterprises. Rare Enterprises. You know, Rakesh and Rekha. Rakesh and Rekha. His wife's name, Rekha. By the way, Akasha Air is a company owned by S. V N Aviation. That's the name of the company that would own Akasha Air. See, Indigo is owned by a company called Interglobe. Indigo is owned by Interglobe. So there is a holding company. These are called holding companies. So Akasha Air owned by S V N Aviation to um, C E O Vinay Dubey. Vinay Dubey, their tagline is going to. It's not important from your perspective, exam perspective, but just write. It's your sky. It's your sky. It's your sky. Yeah, it's your sky. See so Dolly Khanna, Purinju Veliya, Ramdev Agarwal. You know, especially one and five are ace investors, stock investors. So is Rakesh Junjunwala and um, two as per Radha Krishnan Damani. Radha Krishnan Damani is also famous as the chairperson of a company called of a brand called D Mart. The word of D Mart, yeah. D Mart is owned by a company called Avenue Supermarkets. Avenue Supermarkets. Okay. That's the name of the company that owns D Mart. Now why it's called D Mart? D for Damani. Damani Mart. Mart is market. Yeah, it's a pun on the American 
company Walmart. Okay, Mart is market wall founded by a guy called Sam Walton. Look here. No, it's easy to learn, my friends, if you are interested. Hmm? So Radha Kishan Damani is considered one of the best investors in the in the world. His portfolio runs into thousands of crores or rupees. Yeah. And uh, he set up the guru of Rakesh Junjunwala. I'm not kidding. Okay. So Former India forwards Sham Thapa has been chosen for the Mohan Bagan Ratna, the club's highest honor. Sham Thapa was associated with football. Mohan Bagan is considered the National Football Club of India. Yeah, those of you who love East Bengal Football Club, well, I mean, my apologies, but Mohan Bagan is usually referred to as the most, uh, what's say, most, um, uh, most successful football club in India. It has won the Durand Cup 16 times, the Federation Cup record 14 times, if I'm not wrong, IFA Shield some uh, six times, if I'm not wrong, five or six times. Um, it, it's it's um, uh, also the India League champion, yeah, National Football League football champion. So plenty of honors it has won multiple times. And, um, you know, it's it's... It has a great rivalry with a club called East Bengal. East Bengal, yes. Massive, right? like it's like India Pakistan rivalry. Okay. <laughs> so, such, so deep is the rivalry between East Bengal and Mohan Bagan. Both are Calcutta based football clubs. Okay. And this Sham Thapa was a member of the 1970 Asian Games bronze medal winning. Indian football team. Okay. Yeah. 18 people were killed and 243 wounded during unrest in uh, Karakalpastan. Kara, Kara is black. Okay. Kara Kalpakstan, an autonomous province in Uzbekistan. Oh, I didn't put a map. Never mind. I think I'll bring this back to, in the next class. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Um, see, why were there clashes in this place? Well, uh, this is an autonomous province. There is autonomy in governance. But recently, the parliament of Uzbekistan said that we will take away the autonomy of this province. So the people rose in rebellion and there were massive riots. And in these riots, 18 people were killed. 18 people were um, Uzbekistan, all these five countries were part of the Soviet Union between 1922 and 1991. The year the Soviet Union collapsed, these five provinces, five states in Soviet Union became five independent countries. Okay? To bring you a bit about these countries, Uzbekistan, um, okay, the president, you could write. I think this is enough here. Yeah. Okay. Uzbekistan. Um, want to write the capital also. Tashkent. Shavkat. The president's name is Shavkat Mirzi Yoyo. Hmm, that's the president. And Uzbekistan's. Um, Currency is SOM. SOM. Hmm? See, Uzbek, Turk, Khajak, Tajik, Kyrgyz are all names of ethnic groups. An ethnic group is a group of people who have more or less a common culture, a common way of life, speak more or less a common language, have similar customs and traditions. I said more or less, not always, but yeah. The land of the Uzbek is called Uzbekistan. The land of the Kajaks, Kajakstan. Stan, as you know, is a Persian word for land. Okay? So, that's Uzbekistan. And uh, maybe Turkmenistan, I think we learned in the previous session. Um, the capital is Ashkabat. Ashkabat. And the prime minister is a, the president is a guy called Serdar. 
Birdie Muhammadam. Birdie Muhammadam. Birdie Muhammadam. His father was a president till recently. Gurbanguly Birdie Muhammadam. So this guy became the president um, after succeeding his father. And the currency is Manat. M A N A T. Manat. Crazy guy, his father and he. Kazakhstan, the capital is Nur Sultan. <laughs> See, there was a city called Almaty. What is it? Almaty. But this city was renamed Nur Sultan after the name of the previous president, Nur Sultan Najabayev. He is still there. He is the chairman of the Supreme Council of Kazakhstan, but you don't remember that. You remember the name of the president, uh, Kasim. Jamaat Tokayev hmm. What's the capital? What's the currency of Kazakhstan? Tenge What is it? Tenge Let's clear this entire thing Tajikistan uh, the capital is Dushanbe and the president is a guy called Imam Ali Rahman Imam Ali Rahman currency is Somoni I remember this because of E E <laughs> I I that's how it is different from Som na? yeah Somoni Kyrgyzstan, Bishkek is the capital, Bishkek. Bishkek is the capital and uh, Sadir, that's the name of the president, Sadir Zaparov. Sadir Zaparov and uh, the currency is Som. Consists so so much stuff we have written. Look up an atlas. These five countries, you will know this. Hmm? You will become comfortable with learning. India's lieutenant. This is pronounced in two ways. One is lieutenant. Liu means in place of tenant, in place of the main holder. Lieutenant general. That is uh, his deputy, general's deputy, lieutenant general. Or you can also say lieutenant. Left. Tenant. Okay. So India's Lieutenant General Mohan Subramaniam has been appointed the force commander of the UNMIS, which stands for the United Nations Mission in South Sudan. This is South Sudan. South Sudan is a country that became independent in 2011. The world's youngest, you could write this, world's youngest sovereign country, world's youngest sovereign country recognized by recognized by a majority of un members a majority of un members a majority of un members yeah this is a country that's going through a lot of trouble yeah the capital is Zuba, you can see here. Capital Zuba. The president is a guy called Salva Kir Mayardit. Salva Kir Mayardit is the president of South Sudan. Because there are a lot of clashes here between, you know, there are communal clashes, there are political clashes. So, Salva Kir Mayardit is the present and the currency is pound. South Sudanese pound. Okay. You know, um, Mohan General Lieutenant LG Mohan Subramaniam has succeeded an Indian. An Indian was there, you know, before him. If you want to write, Salesh. Tinaikar or Tinaikar? Tinaikar. 
Sometimes it's difficult to remember these things. Selesh Tinaikar, Lieutenant General Mohun Subramaniam, has become the commander, force commander of the Unmiss after succeeding Lieutenant General Selesh Tinaikar of India. Both are Indians. Pitt State Government recently received an in principle nod from the center. See, in principle means not a fun, not final, not final. It is telling the state government, the government of India is telling the state government of Chhattisgarh, you want to borrow, borrow from the World Bank. No harm. Usually the center state government does not. State governments are not allowed to borrow by you know from outside agencies. The government of India will do that for the state governments, but sometimes they are allowed, sometimes they are allowed. And in this case, you know, to take this loan um, from the World Bank, government of India has given an in principle nod, okay, uh, to the government of Chhattisgarh that you could borrow $300 million over five years, over five years. And the World Bank has said that the rate of interest will be very low because it is meant for schools. It is meant for schools, so the rate of interest will be very, very low. A loan with a low, very low rate of interest is called soft loan. What is it called? Soft loan. Loan with a very low rate of interest is called soft loan. Soft because maybe there is no burden. Yeah. Um, this loan has to be repaid in 20 years. In 20 years. So starting today, 20 years, within 20 years, this entire money has to be repaid by the government of Chhattisgarh through the World Bank. Okay. Yeah. Who is the CEO, uh, the chairman, of, sorry, uh, what is it? Uh, CM of Ch Chhattisgarh, it is um, Bhupesh Baghel. Bhupesh Baghel. Okay. The loans a commercial bank gives out are its assets. See, when you go to a bank, when you go to a bank, okay, you put money into a bank. For you, it's a deposit. It's a deposit. Your asset. Okay. For you. It's a deposit or an asset. For the bank, it is its liability. The bank has to return your money, na? Isn't it? You put 10,000 in the bank for one year. Today, your money, your asset is with the bank. But the bank has written that money. That's why the bank treats your deposit as a liability. When the bank gives its loan, okay, when it gives, this is for deposit, okay. When it lends, when it lends, for you, it's a liability. You have to return that money. Whereas the bank, it's its asset. Okay? So when you lend to your friend, for your friend, it's a liability. For you, it's an asset. Okay? So, simple way of looking at it actually. What type of bank deposits are not insured by the Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation of India? Central state government deposits are not insured. Deposits of all kinds are insured, but the maximum amount insured is 5 lakh rupees per branch. Per branch. Okay. Per branch. So if you have five, 4 lakhs here in branch A and 4 lakh in branch B, your money is safe. Your entire 8 lakhs is safe. But this because that's because they are spread across two branches. Two branches. Okay. Money of the government is not safe because anyway it will be much higher than 5 lakh rupees, isn't it? Which of the following has been established by the Reserve Bank of India to resolve bank customer complaints? Ombudsman. This is a term that comes from Scandinavia, Sweden, that area. So today if a customer has a complaint against bank against um, a bank for deficiency in service for not being taken care of or for not being, you know, for, for uh, lack of redressal of complaint, 
then the banker the 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 customer can approach the ombuds person okay this ombuds man has this job of resolving your problems with the bank your complaints that's the most important thing okay just one thing and it's, i just saw it now i didn't i see it earlier mudra yojana mudra's full form is micro units development and refinancing agency micro units development and refinancing agency under this there are three kinds of loans that are given up to 50000 up to so 50000 up to 50000 50k k is kilo the loan is called sishu loan sishu yeah between 5 sorry between 5 lakh sorry 50000 and 5 lakh the loan is called um kishore loan what is it called kishore 5 lakh between 5 lakh and 10 lakh the loan is called tarun so if i take a loan of 4 lakh rupees then i have take i would have taken a kishore loan and these are meant to encourage entrepreneurship that's the basic idea behind this question behind this scheme mudra yojana if i'm not wrong 2.79 lakh crore rupees were disbursed in the previous financial year to loans nearly 2.8 lakh crore rupees has been given in loans under this scheme yeah. which of the following is are the ways to do money laundering all of them but what is hawala i'll tell you what is hawala let's say you have you know um, a friend in mumbai friend you okay friend in mumbai friend in mumbai so you need let's say 5 lakh rupees you need 5 lakh rupees you call up your friend and say that are yaar thoda 5 lakh rupees chahiye can you send them the guy has a lot of black money and he said that dekh yaar main i will not send you i can't send you via bank i can't effect a bank transfer because i have not declared this income that which is not declared is in the dark so it's black money okay because the money comes to the bank the bank the the, the government may initiate inquiry it department may initiate inquiry kahan se aaya where did you get this 5 lakh discuss the source of this yeah or declare it declare means you have to pay 30% tax let's say okay whatever so this guy would say okay i will get you 5 lakh rupees give me a day or two so he approaches okay um agent 1 agent 1 you in different city different city agent 1 he approaches his agent in mumbai and um, the one hawala guy in a, you know he gives him 5 lakh rupees he gives him 5 lakh rupees and tells this guy i in this city my friend is there he would come down and you please hand over 5 lakh rupees to that guy the, the friend is the friend is helping the mumbai friend is helping he approaches a person in you know in mumbai gives him 5 lakh rupees and please tells him please give it to my friend in this city okay let's call it city x x city you go and he calls you up and says that uh, you go to that place collect 5 lakh rupees carry your id or something so you go there okay you go there and um, in the meanwhile agent 1 would have would have called his agent in town okay x agent 2 let's call him agent 2 he calls up agent 2 and tells this guy in x town are so and so will guy so and so guy will come give him 5 lakh rupees so sometimes code words are used to identify an identity to identify the person the recipient sometimes it's um, you know um, you know uh, what to say uh, phone numbers this guy you know once i approach that guy my phone number is given okay 
so sorry you your phone number is given to this age you know your friend gives the phone number to this guy this guy gives the phone your phone number to this guy and this guy once you go there he would call up and to ascertain that it's you, it was you who was supposed to receive the money so either through phone calls or through id cards identity is confirmed and that money is given you will collect your 5 lakh rupees that has come from your friend now your friend and you know there is this commission and everything these commissions they charge more than the bank because it's all risk and you know it's money that's that's um, uh, in the black okay it's all black money and um, where is the word hawala simple handover hawala karna to handover so everywhere the money is handover that's why it's called hawala okay yeah oh it's a huge parallel system in india the world over it's there money laundering you don't want to pay tax you give it to someone else who will you know you convert your black into white some way or the other okay that's it thanks for being here have a lot of fun it's all from me bharat si jain enjoy yourself stay curious